If you are already familiar with generative adversarial networks, you might have come across variational autoencoders. In today's video, we are going to deep dive into them. Before we jump right off into variational autoencoders, it would be good to discuss some issues with plain generative adversarial networks. So first of all, images generated by generative adversarial networks may have some arbitrary noise. For those of you who have implemented it, may have experienced it. If you want to generate a picture with some specific features or textures for that matter, there is no definite way of determining which initial noise values would trigger or produce that picture other than searching over the entire distribution of dataset. Secondly, a generative adversarial network as you know has a generator and a discriminator. Discriminator is only able to discriminate between real and images which are generated by generator model which are not real. There are no restrictions or constraints that you can put on an image of an object that it has to look like an object particularly. This leads to results where there is no actual object being generated by the generator model but the style that just looks like the real one. But there's a simple solution here. We can add a constraint on the encoding network and force it to generate latent vectors that roughly follow a unit caution distribution. It is the constraint that separates a variational auto encoder from a standard one. So what is an encoder? An encoder is a neural network that outputs a representation of data. In probability model terms, the inference network parameterizes the approximate posterior of the latent variables. The decoder is a neural network that learns to reconstruct the data from a given representation. In terms of probability models, the likelihood of the data is parameterized by a generative network. So in encoder, the input is a data point which we feed, its output is a hidden representation and it has weights and biases. The encoder encodes the data into latent representation. The encoder must learn an efficient compression of the data into this lower dimensional space. The decoder is another level. Its input in the representation, it outputs the probability distribution of the data and has weights and biases. The probability distribution of a single pixel can then be represented using a Bernoulli distribution. The decoder gets an input and outputs a real valued numbers in a form of vector. Information is lost because it goes from a smaller to a larger dimension. Now let's talk about loss functions of the variational autoencoders. So it's negative log likelihood with a regularizer. The first term is the reconstruction loss or expected log negative log likelihood of the ith data point. The expectation is taken with respect to the encoder's distribution over the representations. Hence the term encode decoder to learn to reconstruct the data. The second term over here is a regularizer that we throw in. This divergence measures how much information is lost when using q bar to represent p bar in this case. It is a measure of how close q bar is to p bar. We train the variational autoencoder using gradient descent to optimize the loss with respect to parameters of the encoder and decoder. For stochastic gradient descent with step size, the encoder parameters are updated using the conventional formula theta equals theta times theta minus p times dl by d theta. The parameters of the model are trained via two loss functions, a reconstruction loss forcing the decoded samples to match the initial inputs, and the KL divergence theorem between the learned latent distribution and the prior distribution acting as a regularization term. You could actually get rid of the later term entirely although it does help in learning. So a variational autoencoder consists of an encoder, decoder and a loss function which we have discussed. It has added constraints on the encoded representations being learned. More precisely, it's, it learns a latent variable model for its input data. So instead of letting your neural network learn an arbitrary function, you are learning the parameters of a probability distribution modeling your data. If your sample points from this distribution, you can generate new input data members. A variational autoencoder is a generative model. A simple way of defining a neural network is that it's minimizing the function we wish to model. It holds information. So let's take an example from deconvolutional networks in this picture. We have a convolutional network and a deconvolutional network. We see, we set the input to always be a vector which contains only ones as its elements, 
then we can see in the network to reduce the error between itself and one target image. The data for that image is now held inside the network's parameters. Now let's try it on multiple images. Instead of a vector which has ones as its elements, we'll use a one hot encoding in our vector for the input. So in this case, one zero 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 could mean that it's an image of a dog, whereas zero one zero zero could mean it's a picture of a cat. This works, but we can only store up to four images in this case. This is a huge restriction. Using a longer vector which can contain more elements means adding in more and more parameters so the network can memorize the different images. To fix this issue, let's use a vector which contains real numbers as its element instead of using a one hot encoded vector. We can think of this code for an image, hence the names encoder and decoder. For example, 2.2, 4.6, 5.5 and 6.1, which are elements of a tensor, can represent a cat, whereas the vector which contains 2.8, 4.2, 3.4, 5.4 as its elements could represent a dog in this case. These initial vectors are known as latent variables. Choosing the latent variables randomly is not a good idea, but in encoder, we add in another component that takes in the original images and encodes them into vector for us. The deconvolutional layers can decode the vectors back to the original images. We have finally reached a stage where our model has some hint of a practical use. We can explain our network on as many images as we want. If we save the encoded vector of an image, we can reconstruct it later by passing it into a decoder portion. What we have is a standard autoencoder. However, we are trying to build a generated model here, not a model which can memorize images. We can't generate anything yet. To create latent vectors, we need to encode them from images. Variational autoencoders try to reconstruct output from input and consists of an encoder and a decoder, which are encoding and decoding the data. However, instead of direct link between these two, there's a sampling layer in between them which samples from distribution and then feeds the generated images. Samples to the decoder. Here's some convenient thing about variational encoders. Since they follow an encoding decoding scheme, we can compare generated images directly to the originals, which was not possible when we were using generative adversarial networks. In practice, there's a trade-off between how accurate our network can be and how close its latent variables can match the unit Gaussian distribution. But a downside to the variational autoencoder is that it uses mean squared error instead of an adversarial network. So the network tends to produce more blurry images. If you found this video to be helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel so that you can be updated about what is happening in the field of deep learning. And I'll be sharing all lots of more algorithms and deep learning models. Share it with your friends and stay connected. Thank you for watching this video.